Hi guys, it's Rachel here and I just wanted to do a follow-up on our video introducing our project for next year. Just a sec. Oh goodness me, I thought I was organised and I'm not. Now, I just wanted to go through a few things. So, we will uh, provide a supply list. Um, I'm going to type it all up and then says will make it all beautiful and then we'll be able to share a link uh, for you because um, she's really good at all the presentation stuff I'm hopeless so we will prepare a supply list but really the supplies are all optional except of course the fabric so you know you can um, um, sort of pick and choose what you want to include one thing I've forgotten is hand dyed felted wool that's another good thing to use okay so Let's start from the beginning. Why don't we just look at these books? I will link the names of the books. I bought them on Amazon here in Italy, but you guys will be able to buy them from whatever supply store in your country. So um, I'll just put the names of the books in the description box. Um, they're not obligatory. You can watch pretty much um, everything on YouTube, how to do all this stuff. Uh, as I mentioned previously, Ariane Zersha is a very good one to watch to learn all of these very complex Sue Spargo stitches. And a lot of them are included um, by Judith um, Baker Montano as well. So these are great books. If you want to have a, um, you know, want to have a variety of stitches beyond what we show you, um, these books are great. So I showed you those books last time and I had forgotten to bring up my Sue Spargo. Uh, I'm a bit crowded here. I've got a lot of stuff to go through. Um, so just to show you, she uses a lot of felted wool. So I just wanted to get this, this chenille. I mean, you, that, I mean, the list of threads, um, and fibers that you can use are endless. It's up to you to use what, um, inspires you the most. So this is felted wool here, hand dyed felted wool. It's, uh, it can be, um, there were some shops on Etsy. I haven't seen them around lately. I wonder if they still do it that sold packs and that's how I built up my stock of uh, felted wools. I may not use them. I may not use them at all. I haven't used them for a while, but they are lovely to stitch if you want to use the felted wools. But here, what I wanted to show you is um, that you can, there's all different stitches in here and, and she even shows little areas where she's used the stitch. So I'll link that book below. That's a great, a great um, reference. Um, I'll, this is a, a book that mum gifted me many years ago. It's just fabric and floppy and yummy. Um, it probably needs a bit of a, a dust off because I kept it on my hall entry table, but I'll show you that afterwards. Most of you guys have seen it, but I know there's a lot of newbies that haven't seen it. And I wanted to mention, do pop over, and if you didn't watch Sarah's video, do pop over and watch it because she showed mum's book that I made for her. Um, that mum's has done a lot more. I'll show this book here. Mum's done a lot more stitching in it than I did. So I haven't finished mine. She's done a lot more and, and Sarah shows some wonderful photographs of mum's work if you want to be inspired and see. Now, don't be intimidated. Mum is, you know, she's an incredible sewer. She's been in, doing embroidery for years and she's done stump work and cruel and cruel embroidery. She's really is quite an expert at embroidery and she's very creative so um don't don't look at mum's work and think oh gosh i can't do that because it takes time like we can't even do what mum does so you and i and where i'm intimidated by my mum and my sister and so many other people as well that um i won't mention just because i might leave someone out and then i don't want to do that but you know, like, just don't compare yourself to other people. Just give yourself a chance. And if you're a beginner, take it slowly and and work towards. Your goal is to get there, but you might not be there straight away. Okay? Give yourself a chance. Okay, so I'll, we'll look at this at the end. Um, I wanted to go through um, supplies. And I'm going to, we're going to, I'm going to link all, a whole lot of shops down below. Now, my most exciting one is um, Dollhouse Vintage. Now, you might have seen Dollhouse Vintage on um, Instagram. Her shop on Etsy is Lulworth Blue. Um, I'll put the link below. And I've contacted Deb. 
um, from Dollhouse Vintage, and she is super excited. I think she's going to participate in in the um, this uh, project, and she's going to put together some kits for you guys. So keep an eye on her shop. I told her to get cracking um, because her, my sister and I were both thinking we've bought quite a lot of um, you know little kits from her. Um, and she she really does put a good basic kit together for you. So you'll get lots of pretty florals um, and fabrics in there. The yo-yos, all of my yo-yos came from her, my Suffolk Puffs. All of, I, or I might have gotten a few from another shop, I'm going to tell you. But um, she really does put together some great kits. And she's going to do that for you guys. So for anyone who wants them. Um, we're not affiliated or anything, but we do love her and we do want to support her. Um, and she really does have a stock of beautiful fabrics. Now, because I've, you know, all of the kits I've gotten from her, uh, I've pulled apart. Um, this is an incomplete box here. Um, I can't really remember which fabrics I got from her or not. So um, I can't really show you. I was just looking around in here to see if there's anything there. Maybe not. Probably my other box that I'm going to pull out for you. Um, these are new fabrics. I just found these before I even knew how to sew. I had this. Um, I was try I'm going to make a quilt for Lulu and I just kept the fabrics that I like. So I am going to be also using new fabrics. So, you know, this is one of those charm packs. If you find something um, that you like in a charm pack, that's a great thing to get as well, just to coordinate in. And if you find that it's too new, just do a little quick dip in tea and that'll tone it down for you. Um, but yeah, fabric, you know, that I'm, I'm going to about to tell you a list of places where I've bought fabric in the past and so has Sass and so has mum. And, and don't worry about writing down the names now. I'm going to link all of their shops down below. So first one, the main one is Dollhouse Vintage Lul, L-U-L, Worth Blue on, on um, Etsy. And she's going to have specific kits put together. Um, for the, that will you know be a good starting point for this project another one is um, Lulu Retro they're all in the UK these ones Lulu Retro also does really 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 nice um, packs I'm just well maybe I'll pull out my box now um, and show you you're going to die when you see this guys I just need to make some space um, so so don't freak out now the thing about it is my sister and I and my mum, we've all been collecting. Isn't this a beautiful box? Um, we've all been collecting for years. So it's years of collecting. So you just have to slowly collect. And it can be quite an expensive enterprise. So please go and check what you have at home that you like. And then you fill in the gaps. I can't reiterate that more. Like don't go bananas um, spending hundreds. Um, maybe do that slowly as you progress, if you, especially if you're a beginner, because you might not enjoy it, okay? So this is, I mean, I have so much fabric, but um, <laughs> I um, I have it in boxes everywhere. I was telling mum, it's driving me mad because I don't know what I have. So this is a box that I, I like to work from. It's got lots of yummy things, and I'm pretty sure there'll be some nice things in here that came from um, uh, Dollhouse Vintage. I just don't remember, maybe that one. I just don't remember which ones came from her. Probably something like this, these sorts of things. So many pretty things. Um, and then and then I'll tell you what types, especially I've gotten from, I might have, might, may have, may have in inverted commas, from um, a little, who did I say? Lulu Retro. Lulu Retro. I might have some things like this, but also um, I just want to find them, these types. She has lovely packs with these types of fabrics in them as well. The checks. Um, yep, all of these came and she coordinates them so that these were all in a pack together. Uh, and I love those sorts, those sorts of fabrics like that. So that's a good one, the little um, Lulu Retro. Then another lady that I've bought lots of fabric from is, um, because in Italy we don't get so many um, of these lovely cotton or linen um, floral fabrics so I have to buy them online I know lots of these little pieces came from uh, Dollhouse Vintage um, I know this one came from her I remember but um, the other shop that I'm thinking that has some lovely things she's English she's called Olivia and um, she is in France and she goes to the Brocante and gets lots of fabrics and 
her shop is Little French House. And I used to buy from her on Instagram and it was quite a race and a battle to win fabrics from her because people people were onto it. So um, she's, but she has lovely fabrics and now she just sells on Etsy. So she's Little French House. And then um, the other one I really like is Has Been Craft. Now I think she's in France as well. I don't have many in the US because I it's, it's better for me to buy in Europe. Um, um, so has been craft. She does a lot of hand dyed fabrics and laces. So she's a fun one. And then the other one that I really love is uh, Sissy Davril. Now Sissy Davril is the one where I get especially um, the um, French laundry labels. And sometimes she has some bigger picture. Now she's not one to go to to get your starter packs. Um, and the one to get your starter packs from is a dollhouse vintage and then um lulu retro because they have the lovely mixed packs um and dollhouse vintage is going to put them together especially that could be great for this project uh, sissy drove real she has the lovely french labels and then she has larger pieces of fabric that are more expensive but they they're big pieces they might be two meters and they're beautiful linens and florals and things like that i haven't actually i might have bought one one piece from her um, but I mostly buy my French labels from her. And then I wanted to speak about, um, I think the fabric, then I, you know, hemp's, well, you can buy hemp's. I've got hemp's. Um, now hemp's, I just wanted, someone asked me, what is a hemp? I just wanted to show you. So a hemp is, it's a fiber, it's a plant. And, um, and then here they used to hand weave it into fabric and I don't know if you can see how textural this is it's kind of a it's this is also a hemp but this is finer this is so this one would be nicer to stitch than that although this one wouldn't be too bad um, if you were stretch stitching directly onto that with not too many layers because I can see it's a bit of a loose weave so it wouldn't be too bad but when they're a tight weave and they're thick like that they're a bit hard to stitch but sometimes you like the look so you suffer the pain and you do it whereas this one's quite thin so this one feels a bit like linen but it's actually hemp now, one, um, a lot of the antique dealers tell me that these, you know, that they, they can be a mix of hemp and linen. Um, however, another lady who, an Italian lady, told me that they never mixed hemp and linen together. So I don't know what the truth is. But sometimes the, this one feels a bit like linen, but it's hemp. Okay, so hemp is a fibre and it's usually, it was hand woven. And in Italy, especially, they used it... Um, right up until just after World War II. And then it was um, banned because I think it was it was in competition with um, the linen industry here in Italy. So they banned it. So that's hemp. And that's uh, uh, quite often a nice thing to use combined with linens and you know, like some, I like to combine them. Let me just open this up again with, um, uh, there's some, oh here, I had some hemp here. There's some more hemp. Now this one really feels like linen, but apparently it's hemp. Whereas that is a very fine linen. So you can see the difference. I, I have never seen a hemp that, that's, that that is as fine as that. Okay, so I like to combine those. And I love all the different shades of beige. And I like to combine those sorts of things with these. You know, with, I call these, they're not neutrals. But they're, you know, your sort of basic sort of background. I mean, that, that just makes the prettiest background. Okay. So that's what I like to do with those. Okay, so let's progress on. So stamping well, on fabric, you'd have you do that your, yourself with your printer. If you, only if your printer will take it. I'm going to put this down on the floor. So that's fabric. So we're going to have a list of little places um, um, for you to buy if you if you're starting off. But as I said, don't go crazy. Um, and then I wanted to talk about um, silk threads. Now. I bought these from Pomegranate Colors, and she also has, aren't they lovely? So they're going to be fun things to use. There's a few scraps here that I cut up a bag that I was making. Um, there's some silk uh, threads there on my broken box that I need to fix. But also, you can use those types, but you can also use these as well. And you'll have to search in your country where to buy them. I know there's a shop in America, online shop called Vintage Vogue. I don't know if anyone knows that. They have a lot of silk embroidery threads. Another one that I'll link down below is um, Silk Studio in Australia. 
they have silk ribbon. And then Steph Francis, which are these threads here, most of these threads here, is in the UK. And they have amazing threads here, all different types. They have a few silks. I got a couple, but mostly these um, hand-dyed ones. But they are lovely. I probably should move those over into the other one, other box over where I keep my silk threads. Now, I have most... I don't think I've hardly ever bought any silk threads, just a few. Um, most of these my mum gave me. And, and and then also my aunt. These are chenille. I, I, these, chenille is kind of annoying to stitch with. It sort of falls apart. Um, but it, it's also nice to have. Those I bought in France at, at Nant, at the craft fair, the very famous sewing fair in Nant. Um, I went there. I was lucky enough to go there a few years ago. So um, Silk Studio. And another shop on Etsy that I bought a few um, hand-dyed threads from is... Kate's Cloths, which and Cloths is written with a K. Um, and did I write down the other one that I've bought from? No, I didn't write her down. Um, I thought I did write her down. Oh, Yarn and Fibre. They're in the UK as well, Yarn and Fibre. But then, and I bought heaps of hand dyed threads from them. Let me see. Oh, I think they're downstairs. Oh, no, this is here. I don't know where they are. I think they might be downstairs. Um, I bought lots from them, and but they're not shipping to Italy anymore. But that's ir that's not got anything to do with you guys. Um, they might be shipping to your country. I'm gonna don't freak out. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna link all of these down in the description box, and maybe if any others pop to mind, um, I will let you know. But what, was mo what is the most important thing to take from this is um, Dollhouse Vintage and Lulu Retro because they are the ones that really put together these nice little mix packs, not huge pieces. You don't need to buy huge pieces. Um, and, and that way um, you've got a good starting point. And then also, you know, your threads, perlay cottons. These are all DMC. These are Steph Francis. So you just collect up and these are Appleton wools. So that's the threads. I can't. I, I can tell you, Steph Francis. I can't tell you where to go and buy your DMC and your Appleton walls. I'll write down the names. They'll all be on the list. But you don't have to use them. You can just use regular DMC if you want to. Okay. My other thing that I wanted to talk about was um, I had mentioned painted fabric. So you can. Um, there's a whole lot of in, incomplete projects there. There's a lovely hemp there. That's a really loose weave, that one. That one's nice to stitch on. Oh, I've got these lovely, these little samples that she sent me, the ticking, ticking Depot in Spain. She has beautiful um, antique tickings. She sent me that lovely card. Um, they're, they're not cheap, but you can buy sometimes buy smaller pieces, but I would only purchase those if you've got a nice stash of fabrics and you don't need to be buying starter packs and that sort of thing, um, maybe you want to add a ticking. You know, don't go bananas purchasing heaps of those sorts of things. Um, these are just sort of fabrics that I've hand dyed. And um, I put, I put actually, I think I put food colouring. No, this was, um, you know, fabric dye. And I just put a little, little sp sprinkle of it like salt in the tea, in the tea mix. And then it came out with these beautiful muted colours. So that was a fun thing. I mean, that's something, that's some slow stitching that I have never completed sort of thing. So there you go. I do all these things and then I don't don't finish them off. Um, but I wanted to find where my, I know I've got, I thought I had my painted fabric in here. I have some. Oh, here. I have a little bit here. I, I think I've got them in a bag somewhere. But you can just get some paints and just do a little bit of painting on your fabric. So we might do that together before we start. It does make them, like Lulu did this one, it's very stiff. This one's very stiff. It's got too much acrylic paint on it. Um, but if you only put it, and this was, I just dabbed on top of another one and it made a very nice effect. But if you want to have a play around with that sort of thing, that's fun. Uh, I was just trying to see if I had some others here. And I did these ones I did when I did the Emily Notman course zoom and though i did that one by myself just stamping just trying to see if there's anything i mean look at i mean aren't i ridiculous with all these fabrics everywhere okay then what was the next thing i wanted to talk about so that supplies i think that supplies most of you know like the things that i wanted to share i wanted to let you know that also so pam from pandora's junk journals is joining us 
officially in the collaboration. So she'll be filming as much as she physically can. And also um, created by Catherine. So I'll link her below. She's going to join us and do videos. Um, so I, what I recommend, I think, um, would be best if anyone is doing videos when they create their um, journal of stitchery, maybe uh, use that, make sure you put the hashtag and then anyone who doesn't do videos but wants to see what everybody else is doing or even you do videos but you want to see what everyone else is doing, you click on the hashtag and the videos all should come, everyone's videos should come up under the hashtag. Okay, now I wanted to talk about um, a lot of people were worrying about, oh, are you going to show us how to make the book? Well, we are going to show you how to make the book. And as I, I'm, I'm not necessarily using this one because look at that spine. I mean, that is huge. Um, yeah, that's too big, that spine. I probably won't need a spine as big as that. But anyway, I'm just taking this as an example. Okay, so um, basically uh, you don't need to construct the book. You don't even need to decide which, which way you're going to make the book until the end. You might decide to do Sarah's way. You might like to try the accordion way, whichever. You might like to do Sarah's way and then do the accordion way, make another one. You know, that that's not a problem. So because what we're going to do is we are going to we're going to work on a, a piece of fabric and then you're going to stitch it to your to your page. So before you, when you're constructing your book. So all you need to worry about is choose your book. Get your book cover. Choose your book cover. Um, and and then know your measurements and then cr just cut out a piece of fabric that is going to be the size that you are going to stitch on to the page, okay? You don't need to worry about the pages until the end. So just say I was using this book. This book measures, I'll do it in inches. Um, it's nearly 10 inches. Let's pretend it's 10 inches by um, 6.7 inches. Okay, well, maybe I'll look at centimetres for me. Um, 25 centimetres by 17. So I'd probably work my page one centimetre. Maybe, yeah, maybe one centimetre or... So what you have to decide is, do you want your piece to cover your whole page? Or do you want to have a little edge? So maybe if you're doing the accordion style, like I did my my um, collaboration project. Actually, I've got it here. I'll show you. I haven't taken it back downstairs. I need to finish it. So this is my collaboration project, okay? And our, our pieces were, um, they're smaller than my page. They're smaller than my page size, okay? So I could decide, I could measure my book. So this book is, I would say, 19 by, I'm measuring inside. To keep it inside the bounds, the you know, the confine of the, of the book cover. So maybe I want to say to myself, I want my pages to be 26 centimetres by 19. And I, so therefore I might decide that my base fabric needs to be that measurement and I would cover all of this. Or... As with this, so I just lift it so you can see it's just pinned in. I might say, well, I'm going to I'm going to have a ticking background, and I'm going to put all of my blocks. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller, and I'm going to have a ticking background so I can see the edge of the ticking background. And I'm going to have my blocks slightly smaller than my book. Okay, does everyone understand? So you need to make that decision fairly soon. You need to decide that fairly soon, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, so just yeah. Decide that and then you don't need to decide which method of constructing the book until the end. Okay, so just say I was using this book. I said it's 16 and a half by 25. I might, I, I probably would like a frame around my pieces, I think. Or will I do them the full size? If I were doing them the full size, I'd cut my pieces of fabric, my base fabrics. And remember those base fabrics, you just want to use like a muslin in the US, a calico, in, I think in the UK and Australia, um, you want to, if you don't, you're going to be covering that fabric up. So you don't want to use something precious. Just if you're covering it all up, choose something basic and inexpensive. Um, and you want to cut those pieces, um, maybe 20, for this book, 24 centimeters by, I would say, even 15. 
or 15 and a half. Stay a little bit larger because it could shrink a little bit as you're stitching. Um, and, and, in the, and also just be careful not to do your very decorative stitches around the edge because you might have to trim it down, okay? But then if I might decide that, um, so that's if you're covering your whole book page. So it's gonna be full page like what these are. So with this book, um, so this one is, is done um, the reverse way where I had already stitched the pages and it was very hard to work in. But just say I hadn't stitched the pages in, but I wanna cover the whole pages. Um, I'm going to cut all of my pieces of fabric 10 centimeters by, say, 17 or 17 and a half centimeters. Okay, and then I'm going to work on those. And then when I construct my book, I'm going to have my double pages of um, calico or muslin fabric again, and I'm going to stitch them on there, and they've covered the whole thing. Or I could decide I want to have a border, and then in which case I'd make them smaller, and maybe eight centimeters by. Uh, 15 centimeters for example I don't know if that's clear so you can have them smaller or you can have them covering the whole page that's all you have to decide now you don't have to do anything else you don't need to cut out your pages you uh, like your double pages like your base pages you just need to cut out your fabric that you're going to stitch over the top of okay I hope I haven't confused you so I'm going to do that too I don't know I'm going to look for a book about this size I think so in this case, I want to have a border around. I'm probably going to do them on, like I might, I don't have that much calico fabric, but I might find a, a nice hemp or something that I want to see. So I might decide my pages are going to be 22 centimeters to here, leaving an edge here and an edge there. And um, maybe similar sort of, maybe 14 by 14 just to give you an example. Okay, that's all I'm going to decide in the next couple of days. Find my book cover and decide my size of my page. Okay, so um, then the next thing I wanted to tell you was uh, we have decided, we had planned. Now, I did tell you in January, we were going to start on January the 5th. And we had said, I had said um, that we were going to do a stitchery, stitchery sampler for two weeks. Um, in that month but we were also going to be piecing our backgrounds and embellishing for our first block and, and Sarah and I were talking about it and we noticed in the comments there's a lot of beginners and we felt like even for us that's a lot of work in one month to do and we want this to be relaxing and not stressful and so we felt like um, we're going to bring it forward and we're actually going to be doing the stitchery sampler in December Okay, and we're thinking we're going to start it on Wednesday, this Wednesday coming. So if you prepare, I want to put my stitchery sampler in my book. So I'm going to decide whether I'm going to, you know, do the full page like this one is, the full page. Or am I going to um, make it a bit smaller and have an edge around like a frame, you know, have, so you can see my base fabric behind because I'm doing the accordion style so here these ones they're smaller than the book and I had to do that with this with these because these were a certain size that had been specified by Susanna who organized the collaboration and so obviously I didn't have a book that exact size so I had to wing it and find a slightly bigger book um, and then have a border around them so you can see there's a there's a border I, put, I created the border because I didn't have any ticking. But um, so I, I think I'm going to do something like that. So I'm going to make my my pieces um, smaller and then I'm going to have an edging around. And I really, actually really like it. I know it's busy, but I really like it. Um, so, so that's what I'm going to do. So in this case, I'm going to prepare two pieces of linen. I'm going to use a linen. Um, probably, I think I might even use this antique just a raw linen I'm going to use like this type of color for my sampler and I'm going to use colors that pop on it to do the sampler so it's a bit of fun and that's going to be in my first two pages front and back or if I decide to do a title page here I might put them there and there okay so then you can see them um, so that's what I so what I'm going to do is decide my book and cut out my piece of this smaller then my page is going to be um, so that way I will have a border around it 
But if you're going to do a full page, as I mentioned before, you want to cut out your linen, if you choose to do linen for your sampler, um, that about that size, okay? And the thing about it is if you decide to do full page and then when you get to the end of the project and you find, oh, it's a little bit too small, it doesn't matter. You can add a strip, you can add some little bits of fabric to it. it would, it's not a problem. It's really not a problem, okay? So I'm going to cut this linen out. This is a, the lining of the antique um, chairs. And I'm going to cut mine slightly smaller than what my book will be. And I'll go over this again on, on Wednesday when I'm, I'm showing you my stitch, the stitches that I'm I'm supposed to show you. Okay, so we're going to, so that way, um, if we do the stitch sampler in December, that gives everybody a much more relaxing January. I know we're all itching, itch, itching, itching to get started and we can um, get cracking, practice stitches and get inspired for for the project and 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 to slowly work on it over christmas um so yes i think that's everything and we are going to show you how to construct the book at the end so please don't worry about it if you want to um if you say to me like if anyone has any questions who's feeling nervous about the book thing um why don't you choose your um your book and so and, and you can message me on etsy um and just say this is just measure your book like this, here and here. All right, if you tell me inches, that's okay. I get my rule and I flip it over and I look and I see what centimeter, because my brain only works with centimeters. So, um, you know, like, well, actually I could look at the ruler and say, I'm gonna go a quarter in and a quarter down if I want my, my thing to be smaller. But if you need help with your sizing, I'm very happy to help you or message Sarah. Oh, Sarah's very busy this week. It's probably better if you message me. Just say my book is my book cover is seven inches by four inches. I want to do pages that are the full page, no border around them. Uh, about what size should my pages, my you know, my base pieces be? Okay, and I will be happy to um, try and help you with that. Okay, I won't take responsibility if I make a boo-boo though. <laughs> okay, all right, so I think that's everything. Um, so get ready to, you've got to get your book cover. And, well, even if you don't have a book cover, excuse me, okay, you can just decide a size that you want to work on and then get your book. It's a little bit harder um, to find, you'll have to search for the book then, but this is what happened here. I went through all my books and I said, okay, I've got these, which ones will they fit in? And then I thought, well, this book is perfect. Um, and I'll just do a border around them because they're not the right size for the book. So you can wing it if you want to. If you're brave enough, you can wing it. If you're not brave, get your book cover first. If you can't get your book cover, decide on a size and, and, then, um, and then find your book cover afterwards. Okay, so that's all of that. And then I just wanted to quickly show you here um, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, this lovely book that mum did. Now, while I'm showing you this, see, I told you mum's does, I mean, that's that's a beautiful um, old vintage applique that mum's cut around and then applique onto there. Um, here she's just done knots and satin stitch. This is um, ribbon embroidery. Here she's just, um, she stitched the beads onto a piece of felt and then attached it onto the book. So it's raised. See, I'm just saying, like, for people who are beginners, I would keep it very simple, okay? So when I say simple, just this background like this is simple. Um, and maybe not do the heart or do any of the, in your, anything complicated. And maybe make it an exercise for yourself to um, sort of figure out placement of fabrics, pattern, colors and that sort of thing and then and then slowly as you go through the book become a little bit more complex um is i mean isn't it cute um i mean it's just the most lovely thing to flip through and look at i don't miss any pages and i mean mum mum just whacked it together i mean she i mean this is my mum she leaves all of her tacking in um and i didn't take it out i like it she you know it's it's pretty all the little fluffy bits in there and stuff like that and she makes these beautiful pansies and then that's the back okay so this wednesday 
Sass and I will be back with our first 10 stitches. I'm doing half and Sarah's doing half. So I'll do five stitches and Sarah will do five stitches. Um, I think I'll stitch up my sampler first so you can see what it looks like because otherwise it'll take a really long time. And then um, what I'll do in the video is tell you how I, I divided my page. I've also got to do Sarah's stitches as well. Um, and, and then I'll show you the stitches on another piece of fabric. I think that's the easiest way. Um, and, and Sarah's starting off with the more basic stitches and then I'm doing knots and things like that. So watch her, her video will go up first and then mine. So watch them in that order. Sarah first this week and then mine. Whereas the next week we're both doing a mix of different stitches and they're not the basic stitches. So you can watch anyone in any order that you like. Okay, so I hope I didn't confuse anyone. Um, but yeah, find your book if you can. Decide full page or I'm going to have a border around it. Having a border around it, like having a base fabric like a, a ticking, like this sort of ticking, is it would make your life easier in the sense that you then don't have to worry um, that you, you know, you're not getting it at the exact right size for your book sort of thing. So... Um, yeah, so you've just got to make that decision. All right, so, and if you need any help, please contact me on Etsy and I'll do my best to be a good girl and answer quickly. I'm pretty hopeless, but I'll try my best. All right, so thank you so much for watching. All the links will be down below for the shops that I mentioned. And if I think of any others, I will link them down below. Um, we are not encouraging you to go out and spend, you know, loads of money. Shop your, shop your stash first pull out, put it in a basket, like I've got my, my, some favourites in that box, pull, it, pull out a basket, put your favourites in there and say, what am I missing? What do I need? Do I just need a little pack from Dollhouse Vintage to, to just give me a bit more variety? Oh, I didn't talk about laces. Now, laces, I don't really buy laces very much from anyone on Etsy because um, I go to the antique markets here and to a lady in Florence and, and I just buy my laces locally. Um, so you'll have to search on, on Etsy. Uh, I do feel like you probably would spend more there than what you would if you were to find them at an antique market or a, um, what are they called? A, um, house sale. What are they, they called a estate sale, you know, that sort of thing. I think you're better off trying to find them in those places, um, rather than, I don't actually have enough now because I've made these other kits for, to make, um, these other journals um i don't actually have enough lace to do that for anyone um so yeah i i don't have any sources for lace online oh there is a shop in south africa i'll link her below she has lovely stuff it takes a long time to arrive um and it's not cheap like you're not going to get a whole variety from her so maybe search etsy to see or maybe look on ebay i'm not very good at shopping on ebay um to see if you can get maybe some lace bundles or i don't know if you don't have any lace but you don't have to use lace you really don't have to use it if you don't want to um yeah so i think i'm done thank you so much for watching and please uh contact me on etsy i'll probably have 100 messages because <laughs> i've confused everyone um if you need any help um, with your measurements or anything like that and i will see you again soon bye